A one, a two, one, two, three, four. Robin and Lily, Mama's a teacher. I just write songs. Come and join along. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robin and I'm Lily, and we are Robin and Lily for the love of painting. Welcome. We're outside today. As you can see, if you've been following along with some of our past videos, this is the first time we're doing an outside watercolor lesson, and we're really excited about it today. Yes, we so are. So, welcome to the art farm. Yeah, we're on our farm, and hopefully you'll see chickens running around, and uh, you'll, you'll probably hear, the hear birds. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of birds. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Right. Let's see, let's see. And the chicken case in point. There they are. All right, so today we're doing a cicada in honor of our 17-year cicadas this year. Thought we might as well take advantage of that. And so if you're new and you've never seen or participated in one of our videos before, all of our watercolor lessons are completely free on YouTube, Robin and Lily for the love of painting. But if you're new to watercolor painting and you'd like a kit that comes with everything you need to paint along with us, then you can either message us on social media, Art Barn Studios, or visit our website, artbarnstudios.com, and order one of our paint kits. You're gonna get a paint palette, all of the colors hand chosen by Mama here. You're gonna get a watercolor paper with starter lines and a piece of watercolor paper without starter lines if you're feeling bold and adventurous and you just wanna go out trying it on your own. And then you're also gonna get a watercolor paintbrush and a pencil. You're gonna get a step-by-step how-to card, a four-part how-to card to follow along with what we're doing. And we're throwing in some extra goodies, stickers and sweet treats and some fun stuff like that as well. Yeah, that way it's fun to get your kit in the mail. So this morning we're gonna start by addressing those of you who don't have a paint kit, but you're working from home, you have all your own materials, you've got some watercolor paper, brushes, pencils, and paint. And um, I would encourage you to stop the video, take a really close look here at our starter lines. Um, this is the drawing that will come in the kit if you order a kit. And if you are not working from the kit, I'm going to encourage you to start with a five by seven piece of paper. And as you can see, I've placed three dots. So kind of find your center and put three dots on your five by seven paper. We want two at the top, one at the bottom. This does not have to be perfect. This is just kind of centering your cicada and starting with these three dots. That will give you a point of reference for drawing a football shape that will be the head of the cicada. And then a long body that comes down and meets at the bottom point. Once you have this lightly sketched. It can be very, very light in pencil line because this is all going to disappear later. Then I want you to also take a close look at this wing. Later we'll be drawing a similar wing. Again, it does not have to be exactly the same. You can alter your wing. I left this blank area here because this wing, as you can see in our final painting, overlaps with the body. Mostly the wings are transparent with a little bit of color, but when we lay these lines down inside these wings, we'll be using this shape so that this open area overlaps the body. That's a lot of information, but it makes sense. That's why um, learning from video is so great because you can pause, mm -hmm. rewind, take a closer look, take your time. And, yeah. So once you have your drawing, and you have your starter lines, then we are ready to begin. One of the things I love about this painting is the playfulness of the background. We get to splatter paint and just let it do its own thing. So we're gonna start by wetting our background pretty much all the way around the outside of our drawing with plain water. We'll be painting wet on wet. So we're gonna add some uh, paint colors to our wet paper. We're gonna let those pigments just bleed and have fun with that. So if you're ready, go ahead and 
get your brush nice and wet with plain water and we're going to paint on the outside of our um, lines for our, our cicada and we're just going to lay down puddles of water. Make sure none of your water goes inside the cicada. We're only painting on the outside right up to the lines. Also, be sure and spread some of that water out toward the edges. It can be messy. You can go ahead and drip with your brush. You can splatter a little bit. Just lay down some water. All the way around? Yes, all the way around. You don't have to have every edge wet, but I did put puddles of water all the way around. Okay, once you've laid down some pure clean water in the background around your cicada, you've got some puddles sitting there soaking into the paper. Make sure that you've got your cerulean blue and your yellow nice and moist on your palette. And then we're just going to have fun with it. Let's pick up a little bit of the blue, add plenty of water, and then we're going to splatter that around. Also, I want to remind you, once you pick one cup to rinse your brush thoroughly, that is your rinsing cup. The other cup needs to stay clean for the times when we need to put clean water down on the page. Yep, that's why we have two glasses of water. So I've got some cerulean blue on my brush. I'm just going to splatter. Now, some of this, when you splatter, it's going to land inside the cicada. That's okay, too. All right, so just have fun with it, and your painting is not going to look like my painting. Your painting is not going to look like mine. <laughs> okay. I'm actually tapping my brush right on my finger. This is the fun part. You can also touch your brush into the puddles, and those bits of pigment will bleed and expand. Oh, I love it. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and get some yellow. I'm not sure I did that right. Which, which glass am I using? For <laughs> I chose my small glass for the rinse cup. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so a little bit of yellow. Now, clearly, when your yellow overlaps with your blue, you're going to get some green. That's great. No worries. Oh, that's so beautiful. I just touched it right on. Just love what that does. And a little bit more splatter. so much fun. Splatter is probably my favorite watercolor technique in the past two videos. <laughs> I have decided. Yes. Splatter is fun, for sure. Oops. I just put some paint down where my paper was dry. And I don't like that hard edged, so I'm going to add a little more water and let that kind of be playful as well. Okay, so Maybe I did water. a thing. I didn't really think about this thing that I did, but with yellow paint already on my brush, I got some blue, which made green on my brush, and then I splattered, and it created this green splatter, huh. which I really like. I do too. I love the green. Yeah. All right. So just be playful with your background, and when you're ready, we're going to pause and let that dry. Okay, welcome back. After letting our background dry, we're going to take a nice sharp drawing pencil and we're going to draw a few more details in the face of our cicada, a few details on the back or body, 
we're going to connect these lines that make the I'm not sure what that's called thorax that's what i was going to say maybe thorax <laughs> i'm not sure and then we're going to draw some lines um, that represent the sections of each wing on the outside of the wing but those lines are not going to overlap on our body that's just a design element that we've chosen so it doesn't get really confusing with all the patterns and the sections of our wing are on the outside of the wing on both sides all right so let's do that let's just um, add a few details all right where do we start so let's start at the top we're going to let's um, create our eyes first just by connecting this oval shape you've got this little curve that you've already drawn we're gonna put in two eyes Draw a tiny little oval that is the white dot or reflection of light in the eye. We're going to add a few lines that connect and add shape and texture to the head of our cicada. So your lines don't have to look exactly like mine or you can pause your video and take a really close look at the details and draw it exactly like you see it. We have a little circle here on the tip of the nose. A couple of oval shapes. Happy little cicada. <laughs> it's look like it's smiling. Pretty sure that's not really the mouth, but yes. It's not, but we can <laughs> pretend. All right, we're going to move down to the body. Again, these shapes are going to be different on every cicada. I'm not really sure what these are representing, just texture and color on the body. So your shapes don't have to be exactly like this one, but we'll move down and draw a few shapes on the body. Let's take a close look for a moment at the lines that represent the sections of our wing. As you can see on our finished drawing, this wing is very similar. I've left a blank area here. This part of the wing is what will overlap with the body. So we're not drawing any lines or sections here. We want these lines and shapes to be on the outside of our body on both sides. I'm going to lay this right here so you can see it while we're drawing and we'll add a few lines to our own painting. Alright, after you've drawn your lines, this is our finished drawing. So now we won't be drawing anymore, we'll just be painting, adding some color, and we want to be really playful the entire time. This is a really playful, fun painting. We're going to use blue next, and you can see here in our finished painting, most of the body, this bottom section is blue. We're going to leave some white showing through. When we paint with watercolor, we don't paint with white. We leave the white paper showing through. So you have to really think ahead and plan your areas that will remain white. We're going to leave a little bit of white on the lower section of each line or each section of the body. All right, so a little bit of blue. You can paint wet on dry paper or you can add some water first and paint wet on wet paper. I'm going to start wet on dry and then add some water.
Okay, after you've painted the body with a little bit of blue, leaving some white paper showing through for highlights and light, and you've painted the blue eyes, then we're gonna go in and just add a little bit of sort of messy blue on each wing. You can do a little splatter, you can lay down some water and put a few drops of blue and let it bleed out. Um, but we want a little bit of blue, very thin and reflective in the wings. I'm going to rinse my brush and start with some clean water. I'm going to lay down some clean water right in the middle of my wing, kind of messy. And then drop a little bit of blue in there and let that bleed and let it dry. Just like that. I'm going to let mine sit for a minute and let it dry. These are looking fantastic. I love the blue. Me too. One of my favorite colors. It's cerulean blue. The rest of our cicada, the wings, the top part of the body, and the entire head is going to be painted yellow. Now later we're going to layer a little bit of our orange on top of that. It will make a brighter orange, but we're going to start with just yellow. So have fun with it. Just paint the whole thing yellow. Except for the blue, of course. Don't overlap your blue. Okay. All right, we've got some beautiful colors, some playful qualities to this painting, and now we're going to lay down our orange. You can follow the same or a similar pattern that we've created here in our original painting with our orange, or you can do something completely different. Um, again, add a little water, let your colors bleed and flow, be a little bit messy. We want to keep our messy theme right to the end. So have fun with it, but go ahead and add some orange to your cicada. Okay, we're almost finished. It's beautiful. I love, I love your colors. So Me playful too. and beautiful. Let's look at our original. We still need a few black strokes to represent um, antennae, maybe. Sure. And 
do have a tiny little stroke of green that comes down on the inside of each wing mm -hmm. to kind of give it some definition and separate it from the body. Mm -hmm. I think for mm -hmm. mine personally, I just want to go back and add a little more yellow in here. I like the green that came of my blue and yellow and my wings mixing, but I still want a little more of the balanced bold yellow from up here down in the bottom of my wings. So in these final touches, I'm going to do that as well. All right, so a little bit more bold yellow. We're going to add a few strokes of black and maybe this little line of green. And if you want any other little touches of detail or any more splatters in the background, just play with it and we'll finish up. I wish we could hear cicadas in the background. I know. That would be cool. <laughs> For some reason, we've not been hearing the cicadas out here on our farm. I kind of think it's because we're used to so much nature noise already. Like this place is 20 acres of Kentucky forest is loud enough already without the cicadas. Wow, these are gorgeous. They are, they turned out so beautiful. Yeah. I love these colors, I love the playfulness, and it, it's kind of a record of 2021, right? With That's all of right. our cicadas. June 2021, here we are. 17 year cicadas. How old will I be the next time we see 17 year cicadas? I don't even wanna think about it. Yeah, I really don't wanna think about it. <laughs> Okay, so this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. It's been a beautiful morning. I'm really happy with our painting. So one more time, visit us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Art Barn Studios. Or if you'd like more of an inside look on the art farm and what we do around here, uh, not related so much to our studios, then visit at the Art Farm 636. Thanks for joining us. It's been a great morning. Bye.